Richie Valens was speaking to everybody. Richie Valens was singing the songs of the era, you know, of the period. It's not only phenomenal that in eight months he was able to uh, record three hits in a row, Come On, Let's Go, to Donna, to La Bamba, but that he was able to tap something that was part of the national spirit. He became part of the history of rock and roll, and he died with two other heroes of rock and roll, Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper, the day the music died. That's part of American myth. All right, let's go for it. Please? Yeah. Stay. Mark. Sit. Action. This is not a story, you know, just about Latinos. It's a story about dreams, OK? And so even in that labor camp where we find Richie Valens, at the beginning of the story, and all of this factual, I mean, he was there. But even in those labor camps, I mean, there was a rock and roll star. We all have dreams. Richie's came true. Don't be such a dreamer, man. My dreams are pure rock and roll. Well, it's Saturday night, and I just got paid. A fool about the money, don't oh, want to about say it. Make money! I'm talking about making music. My music, that's all I care about, man. Hey, hey, baby, baby, tell me you love me. That you were always thinking of me. Come on, come on. We searched back and forth from coast to coast for an actor that could portray Richie Valens. But I'm saying, you know, it's... Yeah, I'm right, I'm right by camera, look right, right in here, see? Yeah. Some people you can see through their eyes, and you can see their heart, and lose one of those. Well, uh... Bye. Donna. Bye. Hi, Tom. He was passionate, he was innocent, he was optimistic, he was incredibly intense about everything that he did. Come on, baby, just ride, 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 ride. You're gonna get punched right in the face. I, I don't know yeah, if you swell know. up that fast. Yeah, La Bamba has turned out to be a story of brothers. The, the creative, positive, light energy of Richie and, uh, and the dark, creative, um, Intense energy of Bob. Isai yeah. Morales, I think one of the phenomenal young Latino actors of this new generation, really. I want to do that. That's <laughs> Richie's real mother, Connie Valenzuela, met him and she says, uh, he says, you found Bob. This is Bob back in the 1950s. The pain that, that he felt when everybody rallied behind Richie and his relative success is understood by all of us. I mean, uh, he felt it and he held it and he held it until it couldn't be held anymore. Don't you walk out on me! It's a story, I think, that no one in the world should have trouble understanding. It's a real rags to riches story. It's, it's a real American story in that sense. And you're talking about a kid that made it, man. He, he went out and became a rock and roll star, and he bought his mother a house, and he got a blue Thunderbird, and, uh, you know, and he had uh, Donna, you know. I had a girl. your success and everything you really deserve it i'm flying i'm really flying we used to talk about the future you know it was kind of like if we had a future together you know that what he wanted was he said in fact he told me he said someday i'm gonna marry you you know someday i'm gonna marry you when richie uh called me on the phone to tell me he had finally written the song for donna I cried, you know, I was crying. And he says, I'm gonna make a record of that. 
And uh, when it came to number one, well, everybody in school knew who it was for, Donna, and they'd point, you know, that's Donna. He never let it go to his head. It never went to his head that he was getting popular. Um, he always was Richie. You know, he was always just himself. He was always sweet and he was always kind. We're dealing with a lot of memories that are still too fresh, you know, not to respect. You have to respect them. You have to handle them with that respect that's due to any living memory. You have to, in other words, treasure it. So there was love and respect in the making of this film. Hey, Richie, relax, man. Everything's cool. And here he is, America's newest rock and roll sensation, the California kid, Richie Valens! Richie Valens, in a way, was a forgotten figure in rock and roll. Uh, you know, La Bamba is one of the, I'd say, five to ten greatest rock and roll songs ever recorded, and it is truly an international hit. Anywhere you go in the world, they know La Bamba, the song. But they may not know Richie Valens. Very few people know that his name was Ricardo Valenzuela, and he was Chicano. He recorded this song in Spanish. It's rock and roll. I mean, it completely broke all traditions. And you know what? It became number one. I think that Richie Valens became a rock and roll star because he wouldn't have it any other way. He believed in his music. He wrote, come on, let's go, because he felt it. And he recorded it his way. Donna, he wrote from his heart. As I said, it's still the greatest teenage lament, I think, in rock and roll. Cause I love my girl, Donna, where can you be? Roland! Shh! Mark! This is Luis Valdez's film. He wrote it, he directed it. You know, this, this was coming from Luis's soul. You know, he had written about these characters all his life. The quality of this story is to say this kid lived, he had a dream, he had a spirituality, and he lifted his entire family and the, the, the whole sphere around him up. It's a film about a family struggling to survive and succeeding. I can't do it, honey. Richie's a minor. He's going to be singing, not drinking. Yeah. Rock and roll to a bunch of cowboys. Come on. My husband Steve drank himself to death in here, Howard. Don't you think you always boy something? One, two, three, four. All my love, all of my kisses. You don't know what you've been missing, no boy. One of the things that was the most important element of this film was the music, obviously. You know, it, it is a story about family, but it's a story about a musician and his music and maintaining the integrity of that music. There was only one choice in this film, to me, for recreating Richie Valens' music, and that was Los Lobos. They are fabulous musicians. They've finally been discovered by America and the world. David Hidalgo, wonderful guy, but very shy, had to step up and do Richie's voice. We had to get as close as we could to the whole spirit of the thing. And yeah. And we worked real hard, you know. It was an opportunity to um, to expose the talents of Richie Valens, to to let people know that he was uh, an uh, an innovator in rock and roll. David's vocal has got so much guts to it and so much personality that Lou Diamond, as an actor, having to stand up there and do it, it gave him an opportunity to really get into the fire of Richie. We wanted to create a truly unique score for the film, so we brought in Carlos Santana, who's been a longtime fan of Richie's. What I loved about him is his tone, and he was a renegade. You know, that's what I love about him. I was walking down the street, minding my own affair, and two policemen grabbed me unaware. It says, your name, Henry, 
And now I says why it's show. This is yo the boy I've been looking for. We wanted to break new ground in this film, to do something that hasn't been done in feature films before. That is to take rock and rollers of today and give those stars of today an opportunity to pay homage to their spiritual godfathers, not only musically, but also to play them in the film as actors. What better person to play Eddie Cochran in this film than Brian Setzer? He loves the music. He looks like Eddie Cochran. What it is is Brian Setzer's interpretation of Eddie Cochran singing the Summertime Blues. And it has a lot of vibrance and energy of today's music with the same kind of authenticity that Eddie Cochran originally had. Well, I called my congressman and he said, vote. I'd like to help the son, but you're too young to vote. Uh, I wanted to do Summertime Blues. I wanted to do it the way Eddie might have done it in 1986, you know. And I feel like uh, that I've done that. I and mean, it's really rocked up and it's really, uh, it's really happening. Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do, but there ain't no cure for the summertime blues. Come home, come home. It's uncanny how close Howard Huntsbury's voice sounds to Jackie Wilson. Now, Howard loves Jackie Wilson, as we all do. And it's a live performance again, so. You know, it's, it's not the exact recreation, but it's close and at the same time have some spirit of today. Because I, I never really sat down and tried to really mimic the man, but um, that, that's actually how I sing, you know, without even trying. When I first heard Marshall Crenshaw sing his own songs, and I, I think he's a terrific songwriter, wonderful, I said, you know, this is Buddy Holly 25 years later. The 1950s was the genesis of a new music of rock and roll. Today, people are going back and listening to that music and realizing that it has an essence, a spirit. This is music of youth. It's simple and heartfelt, and it's not fabricated and artificial and any of that stuff. Richie Valens was singing from his heart, and I think you still know it today. Richie Valens, in a way, was a forgotten figure in rock and roll. Uh, you know, La Bamba is one of the, I'd say, five to ten greatest rock and roll songs ever recorded, and it is truly an international hit. Anywhere you go in the world, they know La Bamba, the song. But they may not know Richie Valens. And when you see this film, it is a film about a family, and that's why I think it's universal. If you don't like rock and roll, I think you still like La Bamba, because there's a story here. It's about a family trying to make it in America. I do. Connie Valenzuela, who is in her 70s and is still the matriarch of that family and is a strong rock of a person, is a woman that I have immense respect for. So when she gave me the rights to her son's life and his music, there's no way in the world that I'm going to shut her out of the process. So in the making of the movie, the family was there. Uh, Connie was on the set. We cast Lou Diamond to play Richie. Connie grabbed him in a bear hug and basically said, you know, you know do justice to my son, but also you are Richie. Today when I was doing La Bamba and I look out into the balcony, I see Connie and Irma, Richie's sister, standing up there dancing and blowing me kisses. I know for that moment I'm him on stage. So he's a myth. He's a legend. And I had to make him flesh and bone. There were tears in Irma's eyes, hopefully, because I was singing it like Richie would have. Action! 
I think the actors did really well in, in dealing with the family. They were able to extract those aspects, you know, of personality and character that, that helped them. And they were able to block out those things that did not. We knew, of course, that there were family members present uh, at various locations when we were filming. Uh, Richie's sisters, who are little girls in the story because it was almost 30 years ago, uh, were there. And Bob was there at crucial times. La Bamba has turned out to be a story of brothers. The, the creative, positive, light energy of Richie and, uh, and the dark, creative, um, intense energy of Bob. Isai Morales, I think one of the phenomenal young Latino actors of this new generation, really. Connie met him and she says, uh, he says, you found Bob. This is Bob back in the 1950s. As an actor, to have the person there, to have the mannerism, to have the, hey, the, the you know, the, the tone of the voice and all, and the head movement. When you identify, like I feel I identify with Bob, people on in the theater should identify. Hey, Bob. Bob. Hey, Bob. Bob. I knew I was the victim of someone's evil plan. When the stool pigeon walked in and said, <laughs> After everybody else got in the fight, I went and fell asleep on the bench or somewhere. So they have to carry me out. Richie was very sensitive, innocent, very innocent. Yes, we belong together. Yeah, I remember me kidding him about him taking his guitar to school and. Telling nobody to make an ass out of yourself with that thing. Little did I know. For eternity, eternity. What we looked for in the casting, and this was an essential part of the process, was for the spirit of the family, the spirit of Richie's mother. I mean, she is undoubtedly uh, one of the major forces that created Richie Valens. So we had to capture Connie's spirit, and we did it by casting uh, Rosanna Soto in, in her role. That has to be that full extension, okay? And also, rather than down, I think it should be up. Now, Rosanna's totally different on another level, totally different human being, and yet the spirit of Rosanna Soto is uncannily uh, similar to the real Connie's, you know, on another level. It's a very unique, I think, uh, quality in their family. They all have a tremendous spirit, which I sense. They're very strong. She's tremendous. She's very strong. It's the best role I've ever been able to do, certainly, and I'm very grateful for that because this is the kind of role I like. And, and on the set, sometimes when I'm working, I, I forget all of a sudden. I turn around and I see her. It just, it, it's, a, it's like an instant focus for me. I've been a person that since I was on my own at the age of 14, you know, I was always thinking what I was going to do. And I was a lead of my family, picking cotton or doing this or doing that. And my father would say, well, if you don't help me, nobody else will. <laughs> All our dreams are going to come true, Miles. I just know it. Hey, hey, baby, baby, tell me you I want the audience to come out of this movie saying, come on, let's go. You know, I really love this because it, it, it picked me up and then it pulled me down and then it picked me up and it'll be very fine if the audience just explodes out of the movie theaters uh, with the joy that was inherent in Richie's version of La Bamba. Para bailar la bamba. Yeah.